What we've done in the last two vodcasts is develop four very important equations, which you must, you absolutely must memorize. We started with the idea that distance equals rate times time, or in our more fancy physics speak, um, displacement equals average velocity times time. We used a relatively simple idea. We combined it with the definition of acceleration, which is change in velocity over change in time. We did some algebra, and we came up with four basic equations. Displacement equals average velocity times time. Final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Displacement equals initial velocity times time plus one half a change in time squared. And final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus two a delta x. You must memorize these equations and know them on the very first day of class. Let's take a look at a chart that will help us sort through what all of this actually means. <clears throat> Let's suppose that we have an object on a number line. To the right is positive, to the left is negative. If I have an object with an initial velocity that's positive, that means that the object is moving to the right. And if it's got a positive acceleration as well, that means that the object is actually speeding up. If I have an object that's moving to the left, it would have a negative velocity. And if it has a negative acceleration, in other words, if the velocity and the acceleration are in the same direction, then the object will be speeding up but traveling to the left. Oops, wouldn't necessarily bounce back like that. If I have an object with an initial velocity that's positive, but it has a negative acceleration, so now velocity and acceleration are in opposite directions, that object will be slowing down. So here we have an object moving right, speeding up. Now when we've got um, an object with a negative acceleration, here it's moving to the, it's still moving to the right, but it's slowing down. Okay, if we've got an object with an initial velocity that's negative, but it's got a positive acceleration, if these two variables are in opposite directions, then the object will again be slowing down. If we have an acceleration of zero, that corresponds to constant velocity. If we have an object that starts with no velocity and then has either a positive or a negative acceleration, it will speed up. And if an object has no velocity and no acceleration, then we say that it's at rest or not moving. Let's try some practice problems. And in this class, whenever you see a practice problem that is italicized, you should be able to solve it with mental math or without a calculator. That doesn't mean, however, that you don't show any work. Let me give you an example. Question one. A car can finish a 180 meter race in three seconds. What minimum constant acceleration is necessary? What I'm going to do here is identify my variables. 180 meters is displacement. Three seconds is time. I want acceleration. And I do have to make an assumption here that this is some kind of drag race, which would imply that the initial velocity of the car zero. If I've got those four things, then what I need to do, those four variables, what I need to do is go back to my memorized equations and choose the variable with the same four variables. 
Once I've done that, solving the problem is relatively straightforward. I plug in my variables. VI is 0, so this whole term goes away. And what I've got here is 180 equals 1 half A times 3 squared, or 180 equals 1 half A times 9. Now, this is good practice. <clears throat> to solve this, what I would do is multiply both sides by 2. So over here, we'd get 360. And then I would divide both sides by 9. 360 divided by 9 is 40. So our acceleration would be 40 meters per second squared. Let's try question two. A car on a wet road can achieve an acceleration of only negative one meters per second squared without sliding. Find the required stopping distance for a speed of five meters per second. So this five meters per second must be our initial velocity. And we're looking for a stopping distance, which means our final velocity is zero. They've told us that the acceleration is negative one meters per second squared. And we'd like to know stopping distance. Once you've identified your variables, go back to your kinematic equations and choose the one that has the same four variables. And then it's just a matter of solving. <clears throat> Again, good practice. We've got 0 equals 25 minus 2x. I would add 2x to both sides. 2x equals 25. So x equals 12.5 meters. Oops. It's actually delta x, isn't it? Question 3. An aircraft has a landing speed of 20 meters per second. The landing area is four, excuse me, 200 meters long. What is the minimum constant acceleration required for a safe landing? This is another stopping distance question. So the aircraft is coming in at 20 meters per second. It needs to come to a safe stop. Um, the minimum constant acceleration is our unknown. And our displacement is 200 meters. So we're actually using the same equation. Two, 20 squared is 400. Oops. So hopefully you can see that A is negative 1 meter per second squared. Let's keep going. An electron is accelerated from rest in an accelerator of 4.5 times 10 to the 7th meters per second over a distance of 95 kilometers. Assuming constant acceleration, what is the final velocity of the electron? OK, so we have the acceleration. We have the distance. And I want to change that number to meters right away. It's accelerated from rest, which means the initial velocity is 0. And I'd like to know the final velocity. I'm going to use the same equation again. OK, so this is not italicized, so I'm going to get out my trusty calculator. Four point five times ten to the seventh. Make sure you use that EE button. Ninety five thousand times two. And then I'm going to square root that. Get point two nine. Oops, 
I did times 10 to the negative 7th. Let me try that again. That's more like it. 2,924,000. Basically 2.9 times 10 to the seventh. A plane starting at rest at one. Question five. A plane starting at rest at the end of a runway undergoes a constant acceleration of 4.8 meters per second squared for 15 seconds before takeoff. What is its speed at takeoff? Again, find your kinematic equation with the proper four variables. Plug in the numbers and solve. We get 72 meters per second. Use the information from question 5, how long is the runway? We would like delta x. Now here you'll notice we have more than one formula that we could choose from. You could solve this problem with this equation, or you could solve it with this one, average velocity. You should get the same answer either way. Um, just because I have more space, I'll use this one, acceleration and time. We get 540 meters. Okay. Tune in next time for part four of chapter two.